my first language was art. So if they don't understand me, I get it. And can you speak to my camera? Because I accidentally deleted that. Can you speak to my camera and just say like who you are and what you do, what you represent? Because you know, the people need to know, the people that are back in this story. Okay, whenever you're ready. Hey, my name is uh, John Lomax. I'm one of uh, the news editors here at the Cougar at the University of Houston student paper. And, um, you know, I'm hoping to give voice to what happened over the past couple weeks and a couple of months and the failures on behalf of the administration to act in an appropriate way. Thank you. Thank you. So, you guys just did our interview. Stay on the lookout for the Daily Cougar releasing. Thank you for giving me this space. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming again. Really appreciate this. Absolutely. Um, you know, I feel like there's, this happens often, but you don't often run into people that are willing to stand up for it. You know? All right. So, I right. That. Yeah. And don't you think you would want to know if your life was in, like, a threat? 100%. Like, wouldn't you want to have a vest, too, yeah. if it was truly a war zone going on out here? Yeah. I'm paying thousands of dollars to go to school in that war zone. That part, I'm paying thousands, not just hundreds. Yeah. We're talking thousands of dollars. And I'm taking out loans, money that I'm praying to God that I'll be able to pay back. Yeah. <laughs> like, seriously, I can't take out no more loans. I need to be compensated for all this work. Mm -hmm. And I got to go walk around with this, man. How do I focus on my schoolwork? No, man, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't imagine what this is like. But imagine what the young man... Imagine what he is going through. I talked to him. I felt his pain. I hugged him. I couldn't imagine just walking up to this university day after day. Exactly. And in the conversation, when we were having a conversation with the chief of police, I had to play the piano. I had to turn my pain into my purpose because there was no way for me to decompress. I was so riled up crying and screaming and yelling. What do I do with this? I sat. And I played the piano and I made everyone in the room listen to how how infuriated I was putting into these keys. My first language was art. So if they don't understand me, I get it. Please. Yeah, I got it. Send you all the links to all the videos. Okay. Awesome. And you'll see how 28,000 people have already viewed the tweets. How 3,000 people have already liked the TikTok. Yeah. And do you know if um, Mr. Kobo would be willing to share? I'm sure he would. He told me. I told him that I would be having this conversation with you, and he told me to share his story okay. with you. Yeah. So, so that's why I made it a point as I sat here that I couldn't even forget about him. I'm doing this for so many people. I deserve to be compensated as well. But the young man who got his guns drawn on him, that's insane. Yeah. Come on, man. This happened in November, dude. We are January 26th. We want to talk about risk management. Showing black people's faces on the walls of the student center. But you don't know how to protect your students. This is wild. You're misinforming your students. This is wild. All these students in this building who don't even know what's going on. But guess what? Everybody's looking at a phone. Everybody's looking at a laptop. Everybody is holding some type of technology. And they don't even know what's going on. They don't even know. This day campus. This is their campus. They don't even know. Like, Jesus. I wish I could share this, this TikTok with everybody. Whatever. Look, I'm gonna airdrop this to whoever phone. Phone. Um, try to share this message. They didn't try to share this message. They didn't try to share this story. They tried to pull guns out on us. They tried to pull up on a four wheeler. On a four wheeler. They tried to pull up on a four wheeler. Look how they looking at them students and pulling guns out. Just imagine. Just imagine. Officers pulling up on you on a four-wheeler and pulling guns out on you. Just and then they sent a message out to give us vests because we're not safe. They sent us vests. Do you want a vest if you're not safe? Shouldn't you have a vest? Yes, sir. Exactly. Beyond tired, bro. And I got to walk with this heavy-ass backpack on my back. I got to walk with a heavy-ass backpack on my back all the way to the car. Because I can't afford parking on this campus, this expensive-ass campus. Come on now, look at the man in the mirror and make the change. That's all I'm doing. 
Like it hit too close to home for me to not care, for me to not use all of this theater acting skills to project my voice, period. When you got Muslims on campus who get to talk about what they want to talk about, you got all these diverse people on campus talking about what they want to talk about. Did y'all know UHPD pulled their guns out on two black campus students, students on campus? If y'all did not know, go to TikTok, share the story, because I'm posting on TikTok. Y'all look like y'all want to pose for a picture, but I came to tell you something that's important. It affects you. If you didn't know about it, you should go to TikTok. African American Studies, y'all want to have Black History Month, but our lives in danger on this campus. I won't stop talking about it till people actually care. They gave us green vests like construction workers. How would we know if we a student or a construction worker to keep us safe? It's ridiculous, crazy. Huge stadium, huge stadium. I bet you if we were in a building like that, we would have enough room to share our stories. We wouldn't have had to go outside. I'm doing too much work for this school. I'm making a video for y'all because I'm broke, bro. I'm tired. Nobody's gonna feel me until I show y'all how bad this is affecting me. How this video for the piano technology program, and I'm just tired, bro. I gotta go home. Like, I gotta go. Uh, don't think they care about you, because they don't. You have to do this just for the love of it. But just because this is how you fight for your life, you have to do it for that, for your own life. This is fucking crazy. I'm going to make uh, private counseling services available in the School of Theater and Dance uh, starting at noon today. And I wonder if that would help, uh, you know, you and your the, the fellow students who are really suffering get access uh, to have someone to talk to who, who can help um, you know, in a way that's different, I think, than, than I'm able to immediately help. Okay. Well, Dean Davis, yeah. can I ask you this question? Is the announcement Please. that you plan on sending out, you said it's just for the school? Did, did you run it by the president of the school? Like, does anyone else outside of the School of Theater and Dance get this announcement? We, we also are going to hold... Uh, another meeting with the students, you know, I could hear yesterday that uh, there was a real need uh, for better and more frequent two-way communication. So we're going to hold another meeting Wednesday morning next week at 10 a.m. And that will also be in my email announcement. And again, it'll go to every student in the School of Theater Dance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and what's, what's your reaction to that? Do you think that's helpful? Um, I believe that's super helpful, but once again, I just want more and more people to be involved in this conversation, but okay. it's absolutely helpful. This is what I be talking about. I have been up since 5 a.m. The fact that Dean Davis called my phone on January 27th on Friday shows the power of my voice. And I just truly don't feel heard. So I have to keep sharing my story to people that care because I know these administrators are doing everything from the good of their heart. I understand. I completely feel that they are trying to take steps in the correct direction. So y'all, if God didn't want to tell my story, he wouldn't have woke me up <laughs> and Dean Davis wouldn't have called my phone. So I'm clearly doing something for the people that should have been done. And that's just that on that, living in my purpose over my performance. What's up beautiful people? It's another lovely day, cause it was a day that was not promised and I woke up this morning so I'm grateful. Today is Friday, January 27th. I am here at UH's Valenti School of Communications, and I'm about to go upstairs to have an interview with Black Press UH, so I'm bringing you guys along. All this construction, they want us to wear construction vests. What sense does that make? Every time I walk on this campus, I gotta talk about it, because nobody else wanna talk about it. It's ridiculous. Okay, so we at the CTC. Communication Technology Center. Oh, this is nice, this is nice. This is real nice. 
girl, I've been vlogging this whole experience. Really? I had to get in front of it because this happened in November, boo. Yeah. So I if heard. they cared, yeah. they would have said something, right? Actually, so the yeah. moment I started saying something is the moment everything, Everybody, yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let me keep going. Like, yeah, right. Yeah. And I, you know, Jayana, you know Jayana. Yeah. She, she actually showed, you know, has been telling me a little bit about, you know, ex now that they're doing something after this happened months ago, which is, it's, it's very sad and unfortunate and ridiculous because this happened in November and nobody knew about it. But the people who are, of course, involved. Involved. And they didn't have the space that they held for me. Girl, when I found out, I am me in class. You can ask my the classmates that were in there with me. I broke the fuck down crying. Like oh, I mean, wow. like she could not tell me this story and it not affect me. Like yeah. I've been through too much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when she told me and she pulled out the vest, I just like anybody. She pulled. This is how how it happened. Let Walk. me let me actually let me watch the course. I'm going into my last semester at the University mm -hmm. of Houston. So I can only share with you my experience of yeah, this. That's fine. And I can tell you that this week, Tuesday, I was going to my 9 a.m. class preparing to do my regular acting for film, acting for film, acting for camera class. I just went into class, ready to work, and then my teacher began pulling out green vests, green construction vests. Mm -hmm. And she began to ask the students, were we aware of what took place on campus to mm -hmm. the effect that that story had on me in that moment? In my face, my administrators and my teachers told me, yeah, Brandon, you're right. We have to be more sensitive. I can attest that I haven't thought about this in a few days, a few weeks, a few months. I'm, I'm, I'm just so shocked that they didn't think it was sensitive enough to at least tell me, me as a student who stands up and speaks up for things in the school, for the people, that I've represented this school for four years of my career, and they didn't think that this was important to tell me. Okay, let me turn this camera around so I can see how I look. You know what I'm trying to say, I do be trying to look a little decent every now and again. I think I need to change. Okay, anyways, hopefully y'all can see me. Don't look in my bed because it's a mess. I clearly don't have time to clean my room. I'm just worried about getting this story out. So listen, I'm going to show you guys how I'm trying to make real change. I'm not going to just talk about it. I'm going to actually try to do it. Because Monday, the Houston Chronicle is pulling up for a photo op. And they want students to be there with their vest on so we can make a statement. And if you guys have seen the news recently, Tyree Nichols just passed away. Being brutally killed by black cops and I just truly believe with every last drop of my blood that my story deserves to be told before I die so you're gonna watch me try to make some real change and try to get seek some real justice for the young man who was involved in this incident just just watch okay okay where's my phone okay let me pause this because uh, clearly I'm over here watching my own content so she just Text me back. Um, she says she's gonna call me in like 15 minutes. But I told y'all I'm not. Look, what am I supposed to do? Wait? Am I supposed to wait? Hello? I have been at this university for four years. The young man this thing, this incident happened to, he has been at this university for over like. I don't know how many years, more than four years, because he is getting his MFA. We have put in our time, sweat and tears. Oh, we will get what we deserve, okay? I want what my ancestors paid for, okay? Hello? Because I was really curious to know, um, could you tell me any information about who gave you these vests? to pass out to the students? The, to my knowledge, like, okay, so when we had our meeting with Captain Brett Collier of the UHPD, the vests were his idea. Okay. And so he is the one that, like, gave you guys yeah. enough for the like teachers to pass out to the students? 
we ordered them on his recommendation. You know, like the UHPD okay. didn't pay for them. Mm-hmm. Our first, our first thought was, what if we put signs out and rope out an area? And he said no. When Wednesday, third when Thursday, in our meeting with with Chief Moore, mm-hmm. and he mentioned the lack of communication in his own department. Absolutely. I think so then Brett Collier told, Captain Collier, pardon me, I want to call him by the title that he's earned. Um, Captain Collier recommended that to us. I think had you asked any of the faculty, they would tell you the same thing. Yeah, I just want to call you because you're the one that passed it out to me, you know? Yeah, sure. That's fair. Yeah. When she, girl, this is a global statement. The Panthers said fist up. We will say best up. Fist up. Best up. Fist up, fist up. Coupons for the rest of your life. I want to say something that means something. Period. The fuck? Ooh. My website is live. www.thebrandedsanders.com If you want to know more about me. My website is live. Like, keep pulling the camera out and venting because, like I told him, I can't sleep. I think about this every day. Just last night when I was taking my friend home, I passed a police officer. And I'm the first thing that happened is I thought about what happened at my school. That I don't have my vest. And that my vest is not bulletproof. That's crazy. That's wild. If this is not a global message, what is? What is? I got to talk to y'all later. This is too, just, I need you to see how this is too much for me. I'm sitting here talking to no damn body about this shit. A damn camera. I will scream from every mountain into every valley. Because the blood of Jesus is the only thing that can protect us. Clearly, these vests cannot. They don't even want to give us bullet. Oh, bulletproof vests, Lord. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Hello. When the incident happened where the police, well, you know what the incident is, right? Mm-hmm. We set up, and when I say we, I mean the acting faculty uh, and myself and Rachel set up a meeting where they sent uh, a member of UHPD over to us. Mm-hmm. I think that's all I need to know, Dr. Shimko. Thank you. Now, I, I do have a question because mm-hmm. uh, Dean Davis mentioned that you might be interested in performing a spoken word piece. Oh, my God, day. yes. I would love to do that on the on the day of the meeting. Because, you know, Dr. Shimko, I, re- I really was the first one to speak for Lin-Manuel Miranda and Mayor Sylvester Turner when mm-hmm. they were there. So I think I should mm-hmm. just be given that, that grace, you know, to speak to the students. I, I would be happy to offer that to you. I was talking to Rachel Bush about, um, uh, because he, uh, Dean Davis had mentioned to me that you might be interested in uh, doing spoken word piece of the meeting. I said, that's a good idea. I talked to Rachel and we will make sure that you have a microphone that you have your usual um, setup that you would be accustomed to when you speak, when you've spoken in the past in the world. Okay. What if I want to do it bigger, like band wise? Sorry, bigger how? Just just backing up live music. Uh oh, you you like uh we I'm sure we could accommodate that. Uh, we Rachel and I would just need to know what you need. Okay, cause I'm thinking big, Doctor Shimko. Okay. Yeah. So I just want to perform, and I want I want us to be able to decompress for a moment before we even get into what we have to talk about. Can we just? Have that moment, have that moment of just celebration and light and love in the room. I would, I would love for you to bring that into that room. I would start with, with music and good hearts, and I think that would be a wonderful thing to do. Great, Dr. Shimko. Thank you so much, because, you know, I've done a little bit of everything at the school, so I'm thinking huge. I've designed my own light show. I want to do everything in five days. I want to get it done. Okay, we will we'll work with you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shimko. They don't know how big I'm thinking, though. 
I don't have time to do the back and forth and the messages. Girl, you clearly have time. I don't. I clearly don't. Five days. Uh, let me check. Let me double check. One, two, three, four days. I am not playing with y'all. My nose is itching. My nose is itching. So let me get ready because I'm going to be performing at this meeting and I am not going to do no little poem, baby. I am going to go full out, full out, full out, four days. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's show them. Let's show them how you use your purpose over your performance. Show them how you use your purpose to spread light and love. To spread a story, to make your, your own story better than anybody else's. Show them how to live in your purpose over your performance. Let's go, baby. Let's go. I don't need permission. I already knew what I wanted to do. Hello. Goodbye. Ah! Okay. Now you're going to see me use my skills. I need to finish editing this video, but look, I don't even have time. You're going to see me use my skills once again to reach out to some of my fellow comrades my fellow classmates um i'm gonna ask cassidy i'm gonna say hey cassidy i need your help period i will be performing the first on february 1st 10 a.m period I want to design a light show for my performance that I will be using a live band for, period. I am going to show them how powerful we are. Be the face of this movement, period. Hashtag UH students vest up. I'm still doing more work than y'all. I'm sending it to Houston Public Media. Every post I got, it's clearly on me. I can't even expect y'all to help me. Done. And I will say, I need your help sharing this story, period. I believe our stories deserve to be told before we die, period. I will be the face of this movement. Hashtag UH students vest up. I need y'all to see me rolling over as I just first wake up. Oh, wait, I've been up. The time is now 10.03 and I have already posted the official flyer for the UH Vest Up Social Reform. I have had students helping me all week put this together. And I'm not even done. So I just want to show y'all the work that I'm doing, the change that I'm making. So people are not looking at me crazy like he's just doing this for class. No, I'm actually doing this because the people matter. The students matter. They should have been doing this work since November. I'm doing the work they should have been doing. So I just want to show you guys this comment from the University of Houston on my TikTok page. They would have not seen me unless I made a TikTok. I'm going to show you guys the power of social media. So it says, can y'all see? It says, hi, Brandon. We apologize for the inconvenience. Blase, blase, reach out to us for further assistance. So y'all see, y'all see the University of Houston has a TikTok. Clearly the UHPD chief of police has a TikTok. They are seeing the, the issue that the students have. They are seeing the hundreds of comments that I have on that TikTok of students saying, I go here and did not know about this. This bothers me. This concerns me. You're going to see the parents comments on the TikTok saying, my son, my daughter goes there and they did not know about this. Thank you for letting me know so I can let them know. You guys are seeing the power of social media. 
I have no inbox storage on my email. I have no storage left on my phones and I have two of them. No storage. And I have people texting me all day and all night. But if I stop, oh, this, this is going to get blowed over. Nobody's going to care anymore. They didn't care. They stopped caring in November. Out of their own mouths, the administration in the school, when I sat with them in the office, they told me out of their own mouths, Brendan, you're right. We have to be more sensitive. I can admit I haven't even thought about this for a few weeks. That's what the administration told me. I said, when I tell y'all I had the worst sleep last night, I woke up sweating so hard. I was having a night terror. Terror. Terrorized. Sweating so hard. Pillows soaking wet. Sweating. Cannot sleep. And I've been up since the crack of dawn. Posting the flyer. Posting new information. Posting what I'm finding out about this. The layers I'm peeling. And now I have another interview with another media outlet. And I'm not stopping. I want everyone to show up February 1st, the first day of Black History Month, to show them that our stories deserve to be told before we die. Hashtag Tyree Nichols. I'm going to make this performance within four days. I'm going to make the biggest performance. One, two, three days now. Including today, four days. Three days from now. To put this big performance together. And they're going to literally be asking me, Brandon, how did you do all of this? With the help of the students. I didn't do none of this on my own. I could not do any of this on my own. So, that's what's on the agenda today. I'm reaching out to all of the people that I have asked to be a part of this performance. My directors, my playwrights, my actors, my lighting designers, my sound people. I'm trying to find a live band. I am trying to find choreographers, stage managers. I have someone making the flyer and I need someone to record all of this footage. All of it. Because I'm getting in front of the story first. They didn't care about it. They swept it under the rug, which is ridiculous. Which is ridiculous. Because they can't sweep me under the rug, baby. They can't sweep this light under the rug. And I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them. Mr. and Mrs., I'm going to show them. Thank you. Anyways, but yeah. I'm reaching out. I have a, a Zoom meeting. We're going to do it right now at 11 o'clock. Once again, it's 10 o'clock. I be up. I be up. I be up, up. Trying to get this story out. Because they didn't care, bro. When the dean of the school called my personal cell phone. And asked me, hey, Brandon, how are you doing? Are you okay? I've been thinking about you. No, I'm not okay. I'm doing very bad. You say you are concerned. But you are only concerned once I open my mouth. Once I broke down crying. Once the incident happened months later. They don't care, y'all. I'm sorry. They don't. Take those words at face value. Show up and show them that you care. That you care about your own life. That you care about this story. That you care about your safety. That you care about your life. Show them. Show up February 1st. The first day of Black History Month. Let's make some real black history. History.